Howdy! The purpose of this video is to talk about interstitial sites in crystalline lattices. Now why do I care about interstitial sites? Well, they're important for a number of reasons. When we talk about point defects, um, for example, carbon in a BCC steel, uh, or when we talk about diffusion, um, we need to describe where those atoms are sitting at any given time. And oftentimes they're sitting in between lattice sites, so they're sitting at interstitial sites. Also, if we're talking about ionic materials, Ionic materials are formed of uh, lattices of anions with cations sitting in those interstitial sites. And so in order to figure out what the structure is, the relative size ratio of those different the sites to the, uh, the cation radii uh, is involved. So the first thing that I need to think about when I'm talking about interstitial sites is what are the possible shapes or sites uh, that I should think about? And there are four basic ones I want you to know. Um, these are the cubic site, and so if I think about a cube with a, a hard spherical atom at each of the corners, there's going to be a hole in the very center of that cube, and that is the cubic site. Um, same thing with an octahedral site. So octa means eight. There are eight faces on an octahedron. Each of those faces are equilateral triangles, and again, there's a uh, hole in the middle of all of those uh, hard spheres. Tetrahedrons, so tetra is Greek for four. Um, so again, I'm now going to have a hard sphere at each of these corners, um, and there is an available site in the middle. Tetrahedrons have four faces. Again, these are all equilateral triangles. Um, finally, triangular sites, and so that's uh, what I would get if I'm looking at three hard spheres um, <laughs> drawn very poorly. And again, there's, there's an available site in the middle of those spheres. So this is what it looks like in two dimensions. Let's look at it briefly uh, in three dimensions and see if we can identify um, those sites within an actual hard sphere model. So I'm going to be using uh, styrofoam balls to represent my hard spheres. First, a cubic site. So this is made of a cube of those spheres. And you can see there is an available volume in the middle of that cube. Um, and this is, this is what the cubic site would be. It's the empty space that's sitting right in the middle of a cube. So next we have tetrahedrons. So this has uh, four atoms around the equator, so four on this plane, an atom above and an atom below. And so again, if I remove this top one, you can see where that octahedral site would, would be located. It's this volume right in the middle of the octahedron. Okay, next we have tetrahedrons. So tetrahedrons have four atoms. Oops, lost one. Tetrahedrons have four atoms, um, and that gives us four uh, equilateral triangle faces. And again, if I remove the top, this is uh, the empty space that uh, that we call the tetrahedral site. It's coordinated by a tetrahedron of hard spheres. And finally, triangular. Um, we can look directly down the triangle. And this empty space in the middle, on the same plane as these, is the triangular site. And so you'll notice that these sites got smaller and smaller as I went from having many atoms around it to having just a few atoms around it. So the cubic sites are the largest, and then the octahedrons, then the tetrahedrons, then triangular sites. Okay, so those were our potential sites. Let's think about uh, what kind of sites exist in different lattices. And so we're going to start off uh, with a fairly straightforward example, the simple cubic lattice. And so this is a lattice that has a lattice point at the corner, at, at each of the corners of the cube. Um, so in this case, typically we, we think of there being an atom sitting on each of those lattice points. And so right in the middle of all of those eight corners, we're going to find one cubic site. And that's it. Uh, cubic lattices, simple cubic lattices have cubic sites. Uh, and nothing else. There are no octahedral sites. There are no tetrahedral sites. Um, I guess you could say that there's a square site in the middle of this face, in the middle of each face, actually. Um, but but these are very rarely occupied, so oftentimes we don't really talk about them. Okay, let's think about something a little bit more complicated. Uh, this is an FCC lattice. Um, let's think about octahedral sites first. If I look at the exact middle of this FCC lattice, and I connect the four atoms that are surrounding it, so those are four equatorial atoms, 
the atom above it and the atom below it, then I can form an octahedron. So the exact center of that FCC lattice is one octahedral site. But that's not the only octahedral site in an octahedron. Uh, there would be another example on this edge, right? So if I connect these three and then the neighboring atom, so this would be the atom from the next unit cell, those are four equatorial atoms. There's an atom below, and there would be an atom above. And so again, that's another octahedral site, but since it's on an edge, only one quarter of that site is in the unit cell. And the way to think about this is if I have a sphere sitting right here on the edge of this cube, only one quarter of that sphere is inside this, the, the unit cell. So we only count that as a quarter of the site. So this would be a good chance to identify for yourself where are the rest of the octahedral sites in this lattice. Um, there should be four total. So we count this middle one as one, we count this edge as one quarter. If you identify all the others, it should come up to four octahedral sites. Let's think about another kind of site in the FCC lattice. Um, <clears throat> let's think about tetrahedral sites. So if I connect these two atoms and these two atoms, and once again, we're going to find a tetrahedron. Um, so I see four faces. Each face is an equilateral triangle. And right in the middle of that tetrahedron is one tetrahedral site. Um, and again, that's not the only tetrahedral site. So for example, if I connect these two and these two, then I will see another tetrahedron. And so there is one other tetrahedral site. And both of those are entirely within the unit cell. Um, so again, work this through by yourself. Count up how many different tetrahedral sites, where would they be? Uh, you should come out to eight tetrahedral sites in the FCC lattice. And that's it. For FCC, um, we have octahedral sites and we have tetrahedral sites. Um, and I, I suppose, I, I guess we always have triangular sites. So in the middle of one of these, in the middle of one of these triangles, for example, there are triangular sites. But there are no cubic sites, for example, in the FCC lattice. So we can do the same thing with other lattices and you'll see different lattices have different numbers of sites. Uh, the important thing is how many sites are there and how many sites are there compared to the number of atoms in the lattice. Uh, so for example, the FCC lattice contains four atoms. Again, uh, I need to make sure I'm only counting the portion of the atom within the unit cell. So this atom on the top, it's sitting on that top plane. So it's only half in the unit cell. Um, these atoms on the quarter are only one eighth in the unit cell. So if I add up all the atoms, I get to four atoms. I see four octahedral sites and eight tetrahedral sites. Um, and it's a useful thing to work through the other um, structures. So for example, BCC or HCP, what kind of sites do they have um, and how many of them are there? Uh, that's going to play a really important role in determining what a final ionic structure looks like.